anytime you feel shitty, anytime you have a negative thought or emotion, look up and go, yeah. And if you want to add another layer to it, think of one or two or three things you're grateful for in your life. You woke up this morning. You can breathe. Your heart is beating. I want to talk about not allowing negative self-talk, dominating your life story, your business story, your growth. And so if you catch yourself having negative thoughts, negative emotions, what my friend Daniel Amen calls automatic negative thoughts, uh, let me know that you are human and you have negative thoughts as well. Do you ever have negative thoughts and negative emotions? All right, so where does negative self-talk come from? Do you have any idea where negative self-talk comes from? As a, matter, as a matter of fact, where do your thoughts come from, right? Obviously, something's happening in your noggin, your brain, right? Where do negative self-talk, where does negative self-talk come from? Where do you think it comes from? What do you think causes negative self-talk? Is it possible that negative self-talk happens as a result of something that might be in your memory bank? Is it possible that something is happening in your memory bank that percolates up negative self-talk, right? So childhood shame. So were you born with any negative thoughts? You know, so we're talking about negative self-talk and allowing it or not allowing it to dominate your story, right? And we're here on my Achieve Even More show. So where do negative thoughts or self-talk come from? We weren't born with any thoughts. We weren't born with any beliefs. We weren't born with any fears. We weren't born with a self-image. We weren't born with any experiences. We were just born with brain cells and, yes, some automatic autonomic nervous system DNA program within us for survival, for digestion, for feeling heat and cold and being aware of noises. What if I shared with you this concept? Okay, pay close attention. Let me know if you agree with it. Um, I'm going to ask you a question and uh, here is the question. Okay. And if you can hear me and see me, just give me a like or a love and let me know that you can hear me and see me. I'm just checking it out on my, uh, here's, here's the concept. I am not my thoughts. I am not my thoughts. Is it possible that sometimes we give too much credence, too much value to, oh my God, I have a negative thought. Is it possible? Okay, that you are not your thoughts. Is it possible that you are not your emotions or your feelings? Is it possible, right? Is it possible that you behave in certain ways, but you are not your behavior? So when we ask ourselves, you know, about automatic negative thoughts or automatic negative emotions or automatic I'm not going to say negative, but disempowering behaviors. Is it possible? Just entertain me and you for a moment. Is it possible that since we weren't born with any thoughts or feelings or emotions or fears or self-image, that we became wired through experiences to have positive thoughts, negative thoughts, constructive emotions, destructive emotions, empowering ones, disempowering. Is it possible that all of those exist in our brain? And if that's true, is it possible that since our brain becomes conditioned and then in order to conserve energy, which is the third highest hierarchy of our brain, to conserve energy, our brain has these automatic negative thoughts based on triggers at the subconscious level of what may be happening in our world or what we've become conditioned to think or conditioned to feel or conditioned to believe. Is it possible that our brain is just operating unconscious patterns? And so if our thoughts are like effervescent bubbles that are percolating up from our subconscious mind based on past conditioning, stay with me, is it possible that 
if we start to be more mindful and we say, okay, let me be aware of the automatic negative thoughts that are percolating from my subconscious for whatever reason, it doesn't matter. Let me be aware, okay, of my automatic negative emotions or feelings. I'm gonna use those synonymously right now. If I could be aware and if, pay close attention, if I am not my thoughts, and if I am not my emotions or feelings, is it possible that in a state of awareness of the pattern, I could just go, hmm, that one is a disempowering thought. That one's a disempowering emotion. And is it possible that in a state of awareness, I can choose to just let it go? Is it possible that I can choose to change a feeling and an emotion? Is it possible that I, this sentient being, billions of years of evolution, 1.2 million years of human evolution on this blue planet here, maybe a couple hundred thousand years of Homo sapien on this planet, is it possible that I can learn a little bit more about how my brain works I'm not my brain, I'm not my thoughts, I'm not my feelings, I'm not my emotions, I'm not my behaviors, I'm not my results. I have those. Is it possible that with a little bit of practice, I can be aware and in the awareness, I can choose to let that thought go or to accept it, to let that thought just float away, because if I focus on the automatic negative thought, or I focus on the automatic positive thought, either way, I reinforce the pattern that I focus on. Hmm, just saying, maybe, maybe I, you, can be more in control by practicing a state of awareness without, pay close attention, without judging myself, blaming myself, justifying, feeling guilty or ashamed? Is it possible that I can become more mindful, right? Aware of what the patterns are. And right, if that is possible, then maybe I am not my thoughts. And what if, just what if, Every time I was aware of having a disempowering, negative, destructive thought, I chose in that moment to change it from an automatic negative thought to an automatic positive thought. What if I was deliberately in participatory in participation with my thoughts where I can say, okay, here's my negative thought. What's a positive thought that I could replace it with? Is it possible that you and I can have more control of our thoughts, knowing that our brain created connections from the time we were born, neural networks, connections that got reinforced, the connections that got reinforced, positive, negative, empowering, disempowering, constructive, destructive, became dominant. And for some of us, we had a lot of negativity in our environment, our parents, our, our teachers, our experiences, our siblings, um, uh, whatever meaning we gave things, is it possible that we can now become aware of the pattern in a neutral state? And with practice, we can get better at replacing the automatic negative thoughts, the automatic negative emotions, the automatic negative habits, the automatic negative behaviors. And we can deliberately and consciously interrupt the pattern, replace it with a positive one. And over time, the new positive, empowering, constructive pattern becomes the new default setting. Is it possible that that is how you can have better control of your brain? How much time are you investing 
in being a better operator of your brain. I'm giving you basics right now. How much are you investing? How many hours or minutes a day are you investing in being a better operator of your brain? Now, listen, when we have negative self-talk, when we have negative thoughts, emotions, and even behaviors, there's nothing wrong with having negative self-talk because your brain and my brain, okay, is repeating patterns that you have become conditioned to have. And then it's conserving energy, all right? It's conserving energy to maintain those patterns as part of its homeostasis desire, right? To maintain homeostasis, a comfort zone. Can you be in a negative or disempowered state or comfort zone, even though you have potential to achieve even more? So here is something I'd like you to consider doing. All right, you wanna become a better operator? Here's a little daily practice, okay? Take your mobile phone and every hour for three minutes, every hour for three minutes, would it be worth it for you to invest 15 to 30 minutes a day, 15 to 30 minutes a day to train your brain to work for you instead of work against you? Would it be worth it for you? Because if you want, to learn how to take better control of your brain, which you already own, you don't have to pay anybody for it. Okay, our creator gave us an amazing brain, billions of years of evolution. What if every hour for three minutes you stopped and the first thing you did was you took six deep breaths, I call it take six, calm the circuits to recalibrate both hemispheres of your brain, get that corpus callosum in between to communicate, deactivate your stress, fear, worry, anxiety, doubt centers in your brain. And what if you just did six deep breaths? This is basic kindergarten level stuff, slowly in through your nose. Deep, deep, deep breath and then slowly out of your mouth, like you're breathing out through a straw. Doing that six times slowly deactivates and recalibrates your brain so it's ready for what I call is inner size number two. And inner size number two is called AIA, A-I-A. Many of you know this, right? Many of you know this. And it's called AYA, it's Awareness, Intention, Action. So awareness of in the last, let's say 30 minutes, awareness, what have my thoughts been in the last 30 minutes? Are they constructive or destructive? Empowering me or disempowering me? Moving me towards my goal or away from my goals? Have I been procrastinating or taking inspired action? If we can become aware of patterns, is it easier to change a pattern that I'm aware of? It doesn't matter if it's a positive or negative, constructive or destructive, as I said before. The first part of taking control of your life is mental and emotional regulation. Mental and emotional regulation that gives rise to feelings. Right? Feeling is an end state saying that I'm aware of the vibration my body is. That's what a vib that's what um, uh, a feeling is, but emotions are triggered in your subconscious mind. So if I take three minutes every hour, three minutes, just three minutes to become aware of my thoughts, emotions, feelings, sensations, and behaviors. And then what if every hour I said, what's my intention for the next hour? My intention is to be positive. My intention is to be happy. My intention is to be focused. My intention is to take inspired action. My intention is to go after my goals and dreams. My intention is, and you choose, deliberately choose something positive. And then I ask you, what is one small action step you can take towards that that'll naturally move you away from what you don't want? So we want to be aware of patterns that don't serve us without judgment, blame, shame, guilt, or justification. We want to be aware. And then we want to set an intention and then we want to follow through. Why? Is it powerful to be aware? Yes. Is it powerful to set intentions? Yes. And is it the most powerful 
to back it up with action, even if it's a small little action. That's just a yes or yes answer. So if I'm aware, if I'm intentional, if I am moving towards, I don't care how small the behavior is, if I move forward towards what I want, if I deliberately choose positive thoughts, if I deliberately choose to feel good, is it possible that the same way I became conditioned as a little baby and a boy or girl, child, toddler, young adolescent and adult, is it possible that I can use the exact same process, but I'm just going to be deliberately and consciously evolving myself instead of being a victim of my old conditioning? Is it possible that that is the path to your freedom, whether it's health freedom, life freedom, relationship, business, money? Is it possible that if I am working in a participatory universe, which you and I are, that I can deliberately do something. This is a little advanced concept. If I am a hundred trillion cells vibrating at a certain frequency, and if I choose to upgrade my vibration, my energy, my frequency to the thoughts, the emotions, the feelings, the sensations, and the behaviors of what I want, is it possible? Just indulge me for a moment. Is it possible that I am actually participating in this quantum field of energy, thoughts are energy, emotions are energy, behavior has energy associated with it. Is it possible that I am now collapsing the wave at the energetic level and state from negative disempowering emotions or thoughts or behaviors and I'm collapsing the wave into a positive empowering constructive way. Is it possible that's what's happening in this field that we live in? Is it possible this is what's going on? Stop just thinking of yourself as this, you know, physical body. There's so much more going on, but it all starts with what? You learning how to use your brain better. Let's get back to not allowing your negative self-talk to dominate your story. Because when you allow your negative self-talk or negative emotions or, or feelings to dominate and you reinforce them, what happens to a pattern that's reinforced? What happens to a pattern that's reinforced? Does it go away? What happens to any pattern that's reinforced? If you have a positive pattern and you reinforce that, not only does that pattern get stronger, right? But it also affects other positive patterns, right? So for example, if you eat healthy, it tends to do what? Reinforce other positive patterns. What happens when you allow negative or disempowering patterns, okay, to reinforce themselves? Do negative patterns reinforce other negative patterns? Yes or yes, right? So. If you start reinforcing limiting beliefs or you continue reinforcing limiting beliefs, the limiting beliefs create the negative patterns, the negative thoughts, the negative emotions. When you start to have a growth mindset, right, of managing your thoughts, managing your emotions, managing your behaviors, doesn't one good pattern connect and lead to other good patterns? And doesn't one negative or disempowering pattern lead to and reinforce other negative patterns? So why not start with the basic fundamental unit of self-talk? My self-talk determines my emotions. My emotions determine whether I activate my motivational center in my brain, whether I activate the behavioral center in my brain. I love to focus on cause versus effect, right? Cause versus effect. So if I focus on one hour, every hour, I'm gonna invest three minutes managing my mindset and my emotions, I am gonna set off a pattern. You know, what happens when you take 
maybe not a gratitude rock, right? Maybe not a gratitude rock. But what happens when you take a stone or rock and you drop it into a river or, you know, or a pond that's nice and flat? Does it have a ripple effect, right? When we take and drop a stone or a rock into a clear pond, it has a ripple effect. Your thoughts have ripple effects. Your emotions have ripple effects. And that means that your thoughts affect your emotions. Your emotions affect your behavior. Your behavior affects your results. So if you want to change your results, why not focus on the basic unit of automatic positive thoughts, automatic positive emotions, automatic positive empowering constructive behaviors? Too many people are focusing on the effect and not on the cause. So I invite you to change your automatic negative thoughts. Every time you have one, be aware of it. No judgment, blame, shame, guilt, or justification. Change any automatic negative thought deliberately to an automatic positive thought. Can you do that? Yes or yes. Number two. Be aware of your emotions and don't buy into your emotions or feelings. Understand emotions and feelings are effects. Let me create the cause. And that way, if I'm at cause, I will be able to manage the effect, right? So if I don't like, if I'm having disempowering negative emotions, let me focus on changing the thought. Here's, here's some, I'm gonna give you a little technique. Are you ready? I want you to look up, smile, look up and smile, play along, come on, play along, don't just listen to me, look up, as long as you're not driving, right? So look up and smile, and I want you to try to feel shitty, try to feel angry, try to feel terrible, like try to feel bad looking up and smiling, and if you wanna raise your hands like, yeah, you can't do it. Why? As soon as we look up and we smile, we are releasing neurochemicals of dopamine, right? Because we are looking up and we're, yeah, right? We cannot hold two thoughts and emotions at the same time. So why not learn to deliberately control your thoughts, your emotions, your state? Emotions are a state of being. So yes, you have them. However, Okay, however, you can control them. All of your thoughts and emotions for the most part, not all, but a high percentage of them are conditioned. So let's change the conditioning deliberately. It's like changing the setting on a thermostat, right? So did any of you practice look up and try to feel shitty? Can't do it, right? So anytime you feel shitty, anytime you have a negative thought or emotion, look up and go, yeah. And if you wanna add another layer to it, Think of one or two or three things you're grateful for in your life. You woke up this morning. You can breathe. Your heart is beating, right? You're, you're, you've got so much to be grateful for. Have an epic, awesome day. Every hour, take three minutes. Three minutes to help you get your mindset right so that you have a growth mindset of how you can achieve every one of your goals and dreams, all right? David Etchi, have an awesome day and thank you. Hey, this is John. And if you liked that video, watch the next video because it is packed with things that you can do right now to achieve success way faster than ever before.